good evening and welcome to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. I'm your host, Angelica Houston. Just kidding. Yes, it's really me, Nigel Honeybone, here again to thrill you with amazing exploits of death-defying daring do as we zoom from planet to planet in spark-sputtering spaceships, battle human robots, and conquer new worlds. And that's just in the press release. This week, we revisit yesterday's tomorrows as atomic war comes from outer space. Again, and we explore the 25th century with Buck Rogers as he saves the world, again, in the 1953 anti-classic Planet Outlaws. Oh, was that a spoiler? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to give anything away there. Don't worry, it's not the 1979 Glenn A. Larson series Buck Rogers in the 25th century, which starred a stupid robot and his annoying sidekick Tweaky, so those expecting white spandex and expensive special effects to cover up the lack of acting talent will be greatly relieved. So, now you've relieved yourself, I shall delay no longer and get stuck straight into Planet Outlaws. <laughs> Somewhere in the skies above us have come from time to time flaming disks and weird aerial phenomena. What are they? Whence have they come? Dr. Morris Avion, one of the leading aerodynamicists in the world, stated that in his opinion, they have originated elsewhere than the Earth and that they are artificially controlled. Yes, they could be craft from another planet or a development of enemy power. But whatever they are, they continue to cause a great deal of concern and controversy. And when we are tempted to say that they are just a fiction writer's dream, we must remember that Jules Verne once dreamed of exploring the ocean depths. And in time, we have the submarine. Leonardo da Vinci also prophesied that someday man would fly like a bird. Today, flying is commonplace. Even the atom bomb thrilled readers of fiction magazines before it became a reality. In fact, the author was so realistic in his description of a terrifying destructive force that he was investigated by the FBI, who thought he had gotten secret information from government laboratories. But now man dreams of limitless power to propel us into outer space, where we can explore other worlds. So... While travel to another planet may seem highly imaginative to us today, in the year 2000, it may be commonplace. Here, for example, is a story of travel in the skies, visits to worlds in outer space, which may well be the blueprint of life to be lived in the years to come. Buddy, he's trying to weather the storm, but it has lost altitude and crashes in the mountains of the polar region. Centuries later, men from a scouting ship discover the wreck. They're in a perfect state of preservation. Must have been frozen since the ship crashed. Body's almost natural temperature. Let's get them out of here. This gas is making me drowsy. 
Well, uh, take hold of the seat. Wonder how fast we're going. About a thousand miles an hour at least. Border Patrol calling operations office. Border Patrol calling operations office. Operations office. Go ahead, Border Patrol. Golly, well, they sure got in quick. Put this call through the scientist general viewer. It is urgent. One moment. Go ahead. Captain Rankin speaking. We're approaching the city with two prisoners found in a dirigible. A dirigible? That's impossible. Such ships haven't been used since the 20th century. 20th century? What does he mean? I don't know. The ship was frozen on the tip of Bering Glacier. The prisoners were in a state of suspended animation when we found them. Bring them directly to me when you land. That's all. Scientist General's respect, sir. You're to come directly to his headquarters. Thank you, Lieutenant. Come along, then. Lieutenant Deering, follow our spaceship through the Televi. How are you going to be in that dirigible? I was in command. We'd taken off from New York and making a transpolar flight around the world when... Well, what year was that? 1938. 1938? Impossible. Let me verify that. 1938. Uh-huh. There was such an expedition. Uh, your name, please. Buck Rogers. Uh, Lieutenant Rogers, officially. And yours, my boy? My name is George Wade. I'm usually called Buddy. Nibrano Gas. Well, that explains it then. Rankin, we are witnesses to a scientific miracle. By means of a gas discovered by Professor Morgan, these two people have remained in the midst of suspended animation for 500 years. 500 years? That, that makes me old enough to be my own great grandfather. But, Professor Hewer, that's impossible, sir. Dr. Hewer? Killer Kane has captured another of our pilots. yourself considerable discomfort by telling me where to find the entrance to the hidden city. I do not remember. I think I know a way to make you remember. Look into that instrument. Look into it. Those men were once pilots of Dr. Hewer's ships. Now they are living robots. Men robbed of all willpower while they wear the helmets I had designed for them. Shall I have you measured for a robot's helmet? Or will you tell me where the entrance to the hidden city is? I do not remember. Take him away. I don't understand, sir. Who is this man called Killer Kane? He is the result of the stupidity of the men of your century. You failed to stamp out lawlessness, and in the end, the criminal became stronger than the law. Racketeers, you call them. Today they rule the world as cruelly as they ruled their gangs in your day. Well, isn't there any chance of help from an outside source? Well, only from men on some other planet. Another planet? <laughs> that doesn't sound very hopeful. It could be. But our spaceships seem unable to, to slip through Kane's air blockade. We've lost five thus far trying it. You mean you actually have ships that can travel from planet to planet? Of course. And if you have ships that can travel that far... You know, I think I know a way of running that blockade. Well, if you have any plans, I'll read to listen to them. But to me, it seems much hopeless. Am I right, Marshal Craig? In assuming that you can operate a plane from the ground at such a distance, mind you, by means of radio? That's correct, Rogers. Well, then, sir, why don't you send up such a ship as a decoy? 
While Kane's patrol is following it, I can slip through in a spaceship and get help from Saturn. We've already lost too many ships and crews. We can't afford to try it. It seems to me you can't afford not to try it, sir. Rogers is right, Marshal. Unless we get help from Saturn, our cause is lost. Very well, sir. You're in charge. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Deering, you will go with Rogers to establish a means of communication with Saturn. If you do get through to that planet. calling 60,000 foot patrol. Charlie, our course directly for Saturn now, Buck. May as well. They both look. They fell for it, all right. Hi, that spaceship with no one in it. We can direct all the aircraft from the control room until they reach the outer atmosphere. Don't think we'll run into any more trouble. <laughs> Why don't you take a nap, Wilma? I'll, I'll take the controls. Thanks very much. Looks like a gray wall. That's the outer atmosphere of Saturn, buddy. Ten times denser the air around the Earth. What was that? I don't know. Two of Kelly Kane's ships coming up fast behind us. Charge your speed to one half. If we do, they'll get away from us. Don't worry about that. They'll either have to slow down or go up in smoke. We have that atmosphere at this rate of speed, the pressure will bring us to a pit. Signal the other ship if we're going down. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Deering calling the scientist general of Earth. Lieutenant Deering calling the scientist general of Earth. Air control headquarters in the heat. Go ahead, Lieutenant Deering. Give me the scientist general at once, please. Wilma, this is 
Dr. Hewer. Are you safe? Our outer atmosphere patrol reported two of Killer Kane's spaceships took off after you. They did. Shot down our ship. But we got away without the gravity belt. Saturn is like this, you can have it. Right. Rex over that way. Tell the men on the other ship to stand guard. Buck, I just saw one of Killer Kane's men go behind those rocks. Are you sure? Positive. They must have landed their ship and are following to capture us. Maybe we can beat them at their own game. Follow me. Don't let them guess we know they're trailing us. Stop where you are. Hand me that gun. Give it to me. There's nothing else you can do, woman. All right, then. Let's get them back to the spaceship. Patton, check the rockets on the other ship. Do not move. Any of you. Drop your weapons. You are from the Earth, are you not? Uh, yes, we came here to make a treaty. It would be useless to explain to me. I am only a soldier acting under orders. Two of you stay and guard the ship. The other two bring the others after me. Sir, I am Alda, director of the Council of the Wise. I have had you brought here to explain your presence on Saturn. You may speak. We came here as envoys. Seeking an alliance with you people of Saturn. And why do you desire such an alliance? To escape the journey of a man called Killer Kane, who has imposed his rule on all but a handful of us. Man who governs by brute force. That's not true. The leader Kane is a just man. He rules with the consent of all save a few revolutionaries. Revolutionaries. Is it true that you are revolutionaries? Ah, in a sense, I suppose we are. If it's revolutionary to protest against brutality. I have heard enough. Rebels or not, I see through them all into prison. Saturn wants no contact with outside planets. But in this age of science. We cannot hope to isolate ourselves from the rest of the universe. But we are dedicated to peace and have no patience with rebels. Then why not form an alliance with our government and help us stamp out this rebellion? The point is well made. We'll imprison the revolutionaries and treat with the envoys of the leader Kane. And I jump tail and run for the sliding panel. But we can't escape the guards. We'll have to try. Throw the others in prison. One wrong move from any of you. You'll need a new council of the wise. Seize him! Ships are over there. What about those awful Zug guards? Okay, Jerry, with this gun. Take the controls, Buck. I'll find the starting rocket. Right. Dog down the door, buddy. See if all the portholes are closed. Ready, 
get back to Earth. Yeah, that's right where you're going, buddy. on the Saturnians to land them a spaceship to return to Earth. That's no Saturnian craft, Doctor. It's one of Killer Kane's spaceships. Impossible. I know that type of ship too well to be mistaken. Have you tried to contact them on our wavelength? As a matter of fact, I haven't. Well, we must do so at once. There's a spaceship at 274.6. Contact at once on our wavelength. Yes, sir. Air Marshal calling spaceship on 274.6. Guys, Buck, I guess we'll be landing pretty soon, won't we? That's right. The radio is working so we can contact Dr. Hugh. Well, that isn't necessary. I know the secret entrance to the hidden city. We better start using our retarding pressure. Air Marshal calling spaceship on 274.6. I'm sorry, sir. There's no contact. That proves it, Doctor. It is a cane ship. But I can't understand. There's only one answer, Doctor. Boomer Rogers must have betrayed a secret entrance to the city. There's the signal to open the gates. What shall I do, sir? Open them and stand by to close them at my command. Yes, sir. Escape from the wrecked ship, sir. You mean you were in that spaceship? Yes, sir. But it's one of Killer Kane's spaceships. That's why I ordered it destroyed. The only way we could escape from Saturn, sir, after the man of that planet turned against us. We'd better discuss this in my office. Report back to the officer of the day, Lieutenant. Oh. That also is true, sir. It is the duty of every honest government to wade in the suppression of anarchy wherever found. To that end, we have signed this promise of support. Prince Talon, you will visit the Earth with Captain Lasker. Verify his story. If it is true, you will present this treaty to the leader Kane for his signature. Saturn will abide by your decision. How soon can your spaceship be ready to leave, Captain? It is ready now, and I suggest we start at once. I thank you in our leader's name for your faith in us, for your promised help. This is Prince Talon, Lieutenant Patton. We're leaving for Earth immediately. Did everything work out as you hoped? I think our troubles with Dr. Hugh are about over. Have you identified the ship, Huron? Beyond question, it's a killer cane ship. May I look, sir? Oh, why, of course. Uh, it's a sister ship to the one we came back from Saturn in. Then that means that killer cane's men have probably completed their mission on Saturn. If we only knew if they made the alliance with the Saturnians. Well, haven't we got any spies working with the killer cane people? Well, we've tried it. But every one of them has been captured and put into Kane's robot battalion. So what was done with this stuff taken from the wrecked spaceship? Dr. Heuer has the instruments. The rest of the equipment was put in military storage. And you still have the uniforms taken from the crew's quarters? Are you suggesting that we use those uniforms to get a spy into Killer Kane's camp? Yes, sir. And I'd like to volunteer for the detail. Oh, you'd only be captured and spend the rest of your days in Kane's robot battalion. 
I'm afraid that you're of more value to us in the air, Rogers. But, Marshal Craig, if I can get the information concerning the Saturnian Treaty, sir, may mean the success of our campaign. He's right, Stuart. You haven't a chance in a thousand. But if you're willing to risk it, I can't afford to refuse the offer. Thank you very much, sir. Which one of those buildings is Killer Kane's? That big one, the terraces. I'll circle it in a minute. Set you to gravity belts and prepare to bail out. Right on. So long, Lincoln. Good luck, Lieutenant. I sent for you because my patience is about at an end. You have all read the treaty which our good friend Prince Callum has brought from our sister planet Saturn. It pleases me. Buddy, get it to grab the belt from the rack we just passed. Are there any objections from the councils? Then I submit it to you for your signatures. No one will sign that treaty, Kane. I'll take it. Cards! How did you get in here? We were here when you and Prince Talon entered the room. It's Buck Rogers. Who is Buck Rogers? He's the hidden city American who came to Saturn. Talon, you're not going to sign this treaty until I've had a chance to show you just why this man is called Killer Kane. Don't be a fool, Rogers. If you persist in this folly, my men will kill you. Not until I've shown Prince Talon just what you do with your prisoners, Kane. Get to the televite. Go on, move. Prince Talon, you go with me. Buddy, keep these counselors covered. Get the dynamo rooms. I said the dynamo room, Kane. See for yourself, Prince Stella. Those steel caps they're wearing are Amnesia helmets, an invention of Kane's scientists to rob men of their minds and their will. But this is incredible. Nevertheless, Talon's true. Now do you know why we are fighting this man? Who is your leader? I shall be glad to treat with him. That's a very handsome gesture, Prince Talon. But how do you and Rogers plan to leave my city? You will be arrested by my guards before you can leave the palace. I have taken care of that, King. Buddy, toss me that gravity belt. That the gravity belt? I don't understand. It's a device we use here on Earth. It's really an outgrowth of the old parachute. Put it on, Kevin. Oh, I see. Buddy. Out the window you go, you two. Well, how about you, Buck? Never mind about me. Come on, over here, quick. When future historians of the 20th century try to think of a title which best expresses the spirit of the period, they'll probably call it the Age of Advertising, just before they work out how to send a nuclear bomb back in time, I dare say. I'll allow you a few minutes to let these words of squishy wisdom soak in, and then after the ads, we'll get Buck to Back Rogers. I mean, Back to Back Rogers. Oh, you know what I mean, in Planet Outlaws. Back to Back Rogers, I think I've seen that website.
Now, for the first time, you can get famous Raleigh coupons with a light menthol cigarette. Yes, Bel Air, new Bel Air, now has Raleigh coupons, good for hundreds of wonderful free gifts. Bel Air, the light menthol cigarette that gives you true tobacco taste. There's a light touch of menthol in a Bel Air cigarette. Just the right touch of menthol in a Bel Air cigarette. So look for the pack with the coupon on the back. Smoke Bel Air, new Bel Air. So refreshing. Fine tobaccos with a light touch. Just the right touch of menthol. And the pure white modern filter. Get true tobacco taste in a menthol cigarette. Get Bel Air, the only menthol cigarette with a famous Raleigh coupon. Look for the pack with the coupon on the back. Smoke Bel Air, new Bel Air. Welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show and Planet Outlaws. I guess 20th century viewers were less sophisticated than we are in the 21st century. We would never allow an organisation like Universal Studios to take 12 perfectly fine, thrill-thronged episodes of Buck Rogers from 1939 and cut them down to just 38 minutes of silver screeniness with a different title. As if we'd never notice. No, in these enlightened times, they'd simply release the entire serial on DVD with special features, bloopers and director's commentary in Mongolian. Director Ford Beebe, who also worked on Flash Gordon, came straight from the Phantom Creeps and then went back to finish Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. Planet Outlaws stars Buster Crab, or as his family knew him, Lawrence. Now, Lawrence Larry Buster Crab had previously starred in two Flash Gordon serials, a couple of Tarzan movies, and a long string of westerns. So it was only natural for Universal to decide that he was perfect as the heroic Buck Rogers, aka that blonde guy who keeps saving the universe but isn't Flash Gordon. Actually, Buster Crab wasn't the first actor to play Buck Rogers in the flesh. That honour goes to an unknown man who played Buck in a Virginia department store instead of their regular Santa Claus. Santa was off conquering the Martians at the time. I think it was an exchange program of some sort. Constance Moore was probably glad to get the work in what would become her first and only high-profile film role, cast as the seldom-seen romantic interest Wilma Deering, a role made far more prominent by Erin Gray and Lycra in the Glen A. Larson television series. Jackie Moran, being one of the least remembered but most active child actors during the 1930s, found his feet as sidekick and mm, special friend George Buddy Wade. After 30 films within a single decade, Jackie retired from acting at the ripe old age of 23. In the 1960s, a screenwriter using Jackie's real name, John E. Moran, worked extensively with Russ Meyer, notably on the films Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, Common Law Cabin, and Wild Gals of the Naked West, also playing small roles in the latter two films. The credits of the two are often confused, and even in this age of the information super cul-de-sac, verification can be difficult. Anthony Ward, who had a huge amount of work under the pseudonym Uncredited, plays the evil Killer Kane. In the original comic strip, he was called Oberkane, had a twin brother named Nova, and had a pistol called Baby. In the comics, he also had a girlfriend named Ardala Valma. But the far more evil Hayes Code would not allow any of this background to be used, so instead, Kane was presented as just another despotic ruler of a future Earth. But if you're starting to think that 68 minutes of black and white futuristic blast from the past is a bit beyond you, and you have all those socks to wash before Monday, you should at least stick around to see Prince Talon of Saturn, wonderfully played by Philip Arne in a rather embarrassing piece of typecasting. I hope he kept the costume, if only to see what it looked like in colour. You may remember him as Master Khan from the early 70s TV show Kung Fu. There. I don't think I've given away too much of what little plot there is. So come fly with me and Buck Rogers in a sparkler-powered steam iron in Planet Outlaws. Get the car, you fool! If they get away, I'll put every man of you in the room and pretend! They're on the terrace. Necessary, bring in some of the ships from the outer atmosphere patrol. Assign them to cover Kane City. Rogers will be given all possible help. Nothing new to Rogers. I'm sorry, Doctor, not a word. 
It looks bad. Marshal Craig, we can't just stand here and do nothing. Maybe if we... Lieutenant Deering, you forget where you are. Oh, it's possible that Rogers has escaped. He may be somewhere in the open country between here and Kane City. I suggest we send out a scout patrol and look for him. Do so at once, Craig. Lieutenant Deering. Yes, sir? You're a member of the 7th Pursuit, aren't you? Yes, sir. Order out the squadron. Cover all of the open country between here and Kane City. Flying at a low altitude. I'll have your complete flying order sent to the airport. That is all. Yes, sir. She'll find Doc Rogers if anybody can. Patrol ship, sir. Escaped? In my ship? You blackheads! I'll send every one of you to the Rover Battalion. Report to the guard captain under arrest. Yes, sir. The leader's airport. The spies have escaped in my private patrol ship. Send the squadron after them and shoot them down. Warn all outposts. If they break through to the open country, we'll never get them. You are the men I made counselors of Earth. I would be better served by this Buck Rogers, who walked through your men as if they were children. I notice you didn't capture Rogers when he was in this very room. Cranko, I warn you. Another statement like that and you will go before the firing squad. And so will all of you if you fear me again. Now get out! To your hidden city, Colonel Rogers. Oh, uh, about 600 miles. I wouldn't call old Dr. Hugh exactly handsome, but I sure would give a lot to see his face right now. <laughs> I bet you would, buddy. Tell him I should have returned this treaty to you after I took it from Killer King. I'd forgotten about it in the excitement. Someday you must return to the planet Saturn with me and receive the thanks of people for preventing the alliance with Kane. I'd rather you thank me by giving us your planet support. And smashing Killer Kane's armies. Hey, Buck, here comes a whole squadron at us. Is it a Kane squadron? No, no, it's one of our own from the hidden city. Calling Lieutenant Deering. This is Lieutenant Deering. Go ahead, please. It's a Killer Kane ship approaching beneath us about 6,000. Pull out a formation and bring it down before you communicate with headquarters. Yes, sir. Hey, Buck, one of them's diving at us. I can't un... Yes, I can. This is Killer Kane's ship. They think we're an enemy. Just below it. Fire blast into the tail surface and I level out. They're going to shoot us down. The only thing we can do is set down and let them see who we are. I ever saw Killer Kane's ship give up so easily. Stop, 
Rogers and Betty. We thought you were an enemy ship. I'm so glad that was not a direct hit. Uh, that makes it unanimous, Wilma. Who is this? One of Killer Kane's men? I know. He's the best friend we have, Randy. It's Prince Tala, on board from the planet Saturn. He's going to help us in our fight against Killer Kane. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I didn't understand. Well, that's an old custom we have here. It's a sign of friendship, like this, Tala. That's right. Wilma, report back to your squadron. Advise your commander what happened. Tell him we'll follow you back to the hidden city and gain ship. Oh, I thought I will. Good. Most of he's been taken care of, sir. Dr. Heuer, this is Prince Talon, envoy from the planet Saturn. Dr. Heuer is our scientist general. And Air Marshal Craig, our operations chief. Prince Talon? Prince Talon, you bring new hope to a beleaguered race. If it had not been for Colonel Rogers, I think your enemy would have tricked me into fighting him instead of helping him. I am authorized to sign this treaty pledging our support to your cause. It will be more honest to let see our people and decide whether we are worthy of your help. Lieutenant Deering, it will be well to contact the planet Saturn. Yes, sir. Advise them that we have signed a treaty with Prince Talon, that they are at war with Killer Kane. Yes, sir. The Earth calling planet Saturn the Earth calling planet Saturn. I assure the leader that the hidden city squadron was upon us before we could bomb Rogers and Talon again. So you allowed Rogers to escape with Talon to the hidden city? We could not help ourselves. You see, we were spies. If Talon pledges the aid of Saturn to Dr. Hewitt, they will drive us from the face of the Earth. We brought it on ourselves. You should have taken my advice. Quick, when we had it on. Since you are so clever, you shall take a spaceship to Saturn and arrange a treaty with her people before Talon has time to report back. I refuse. I will not be a tool for your insane ambitions. I am in command here, Krenko. Take him away to the robot battalion where he can forget his grievances. You can't send me there, Kane. You can't. I'll head your commission to Saturn. I'll head your commission to Saturn. But don't send me to Robert Kane. No. Anything to say, say it now, Krenko. When this helmet is in place, you'll never think nor speak again. You can tell Cain that I'll escape. I'll live to see the day that his... One more dead mine in the ranks of the leader's enemies. I trust no others share the feelings of the late Counselor Krinko. Being a kindly ruler, I shall give you a chance to redeem yourself. Thank you, sir. Fly a spaceship to Saturn and arrange the treaty that Krenko refused to try. If you succeed, there is an empty chair at my council table. The Earth calling to planet Saturn. I'm afraid it's useless, Doctor. Apparently, our receiving sets are not in tune with your projectors. In that event, you'll have to return to Saturn by spaceship. I doubt whether such a trip is possible. Air controls. Book reports from our outer atmosphere observatory. Report just received, sir. Killer Kane has doubled all air patrols in that stratum. A spaceship wouldn't have a chance. I am not quite so sure about that, Craig. Not sure? You know what's happened to all our ships to try to break through. Yes, but I've been working on a little experiment that may help us. What kind of an experiment? Well, I didn't mean to show it until I had perfected it, but uh, even as it is, it may serve our purpose. Just step over to this window. Now watch the ship nearest you. Stand well back. I don't want to experiment on you. Do you know anything about this? 
I knew he was working on something, but he wouldn't say what it was. Now keep an eye on that ship. I don't say anything strange about it. What's it supposed to do, Doctor? Blow up or something? Why, it's disappearing in the thin air. Oh, don't get in the way. Might do the same thing to you. Wouldn't harm you very much, but it may take some time to bring you back to visibility. But I don't see how that'll help, sir. If you've destroyed the ship... Oh, but I haven't. The ship is still there, but you can't see it. I have discovered a ray which reduces all opaque matter to transparency, perfect as the ether itself. Unfortunately, I can hold it only for a matter of a few minutes. Ten at most. And the ray won't harm anybody inside the ship? Not at all. Well, then the problem's solved. And the sooner we start, the better. Yes. They'll need a navigator, sir. Oh, yes, so they will. You will report to the air control room and make ready for immediate flight. Yes, sir. Well, if I have to take you with me, we'll get to the control room. Doctor. Have the rockets loaded into a spaceship for immediate takeoff. Yes, sir. Rocket laboratory. This is the air control office. Have spaceship LZ-9 loaded immediately for takeoff. These are retarding rockets. Make sure you put them in the lower racks with the firing end forward. You'll be pretty much on your own when you reach Saturn. We get through Kane's blockade. All depends on Dr. Hewitt, tell him. I'll radio him as soon as we spot any of the Kane's ships. Buck, there they are, right above us. Dr. Hewitt? Dr. Hewitt? Buck Rogers calling. This is Dr. Hewitt. Go ahead, Buck. We spotted the Kane ship, sir. They're directly above us. Let us start your dissolve array. I'll turn it on immediately, Buck. A hidden city ship rising, sir. Trying to run our blockade. Head straight for it. Man the ray guns. Hold your fire like of the order. Perfectly, Doctor. Look, it's disappearing in the thin air. It's vanished. Attention, all patrol ships. The hidden city spaceship has just run our blockade. Spread out, circle, and try to locate it. You all right, Tom? Yes. You, Wilma? Fine, Doctor. Stand by your rocket controls. Here we are back to normal again. <laughs> With better relief. A strange sensation being up here in a ship we couldn't see. Now, the main thing is we got through Killer Kane's blockade. Now the only thing left between us and Saturn is <laughs> space. Lieutenant Gehring and I must return to the Earth immediately. So I realize the need for your haste. I will see you to your spaceship. Thank you, Talon. Goodbye, sir. Come 
starting line. Colonel Roger on Saturn calling a scientist general on Earth. Control room calling the scientist general. Air control room calling the scientist general. Doctor Hewitt, it's Buck Rogers. Yes, Buck. Is everything all right? Yes, sir. Room and I are taking off immediately, sir. But before we do, we wanted to check with you about the dissolve ray. It's still imperfect. We can count on it to make you invisible long enough to slip through Kay's air blockade. Eh? That's fine, Doctor. Then as soon as we near the Earth, we'll advise you. As long as Dr. Kerr is ready for you, there is nothing to keep you here any longer. No, Talon. We'll get in touch with you on the space radio as soon as we decide the best way to rid the Earth of Kira Kane and his outlaw army. The best of luck to you. Thank you, Talon. Fire the starting rocket, Wilma. to check over the dissolve array apparatus and once and bring it here. Colonel Rogers is on his way back from Stanton and we need to bring him through the blockade. Yes, sir. I am preparing another expedition to force the Saturnian to sign a treaty with us. This time I shall... This is the leader. Sir, an unidentified spaceship has been reported returning from Saturn. Notify the commander of the Outer Atmosphere Patrol and keep me closely informed. Report an unidentified spaceship returning from Saturn. Perhaps Laska has been successful after all. We'll make no move until we learn more. Adjourn. Patrol 62, calling Patrol 62. This is Patrol 62. This is Commander White. Take your patrol to the 120,000 foot level. Watch for a spaceship returning from Saturn. If it is an enemy craft, bring it down. Yes, sir. 120,000 foot level. Yes, sir. Well, man, better give me a few retarding rockets. Soon be in the outer atmosphere. All right. Dr. Ewer. Dr. Ewer. We're approaching the 160,000 foot level, sir. Stand by with your dissolve array. We're all set, Buck. Just give the word. Buck, there's a Kane patrol squadron coming up fast beneath us. Dr. Hewer, give us the ray now, sir. One of King's patrol squadrons has spotted us. There she is. Squadron 62, spaceship sighted. Fly above it and use attack formation 9. Happy fog at this level. That ship seems to be disappearing. What 
you trust me, Craig. Certainly. Sure did, Jimmy Rankin. Oh, Lacey, check the machinery on this ship. The Air Marshal will want all the information he can get on it. Yes, sir. about the Saturnian Treaty? By all means, Colonel. The rulers of the planet Saturn are with us in our fight against Killer Kane, sir. They're going to send spaceships as soon as we're ready to attack. With this support, we cannot lose. We must call a meeting of the War Council at once. Yes. Yeah. I'll take over now. Oh, you're early. A little. I was anxious to find out what's been happening. Well, the war minister's been in there with Craig since 9 o'clock. Something's up. Yeah. Oh, good night. Good night. Get in that room. Calling the leader king, calling the leader. Calling the leader king, calling the leader. Calling the leader king, calling the leader. This is the leader king. Sir, this is Carson of your private patrol ship. I will lay in the city air control room. Hidden city? You know where the secret entrance is? Yes, sir. It's in the Valley 100 on our maps. The gates are open now. I'll notify the outer atmosphere patrol at once. The leader, calling Commander White. This is Commander White, sir. The secret entrance to the hidden city is in Valley 100. The gates are open. Proceed there with your squadron and destroy the city. It shall be done, sir. Contact. All ships, attention all ships. Objective Valley 100 at full throttle. Gentlemen, we'll see you in the morning. Good night, Marshal. Good night, Colonel. Good night, Colonel. Good night. You know, Marshal Craig, I still believe that every day we delay our attack on Killer Kane is a day lost. I'm inclined to agree with you, Colonel. We'll discuss it again at the War Council tomorrow. Yes, sir. Excuse me a moment. Any messages for me? No, sir. Where's the other operator? I don't know, sir. He left a few minutes ago. Well, he'll go back to space duty for this. The fools left the gates open. Don't drop that switch. Kane spy. That's right. Brought here by Colonel Rogers himself. Oh, so you stowed away in that patrol ship, did you? I should have had sense enough to search it. You won't have to worry long about that, Colonel. There's a full squadron of the leader's planes on the way here now. That squadron will be here any minute now. Uh, the airport guards will blast them to pieces before they land. I think you're mistaken.
Send all available men to the airport. Two killer canes patrol ships and force the hidden gates. We've got to work fast. Show them no mercy. Stand that way. No use. We're outnumbered ten to one. Take their guns, men. I'll throw them in the guardhouse and put them in iron. Get a doctor here quickly, Rankin. Don't bother, sir. Just a burn from the ray gun. Be all right tomorrow. I hope so. We'll need you at the war council meeting. Remove that prisoner. All right, then. Take him away. May I suggest, sir, that the best possible defense is the bold defense. After what happened last night, our only chance is to attack Killer Kane immediately. He now knows the secret entrance to our city, and every hour we delay, we can chances. I suggest, sir, that we contact our allies on Saturn immediately and ask their support. I said you might wait for Colonel Rogers, but no listening. Then it is the unanimous vote of this war council that we communicate with Saturn immediately, ask their promised support, and attack Kane stronghold at once. We stand adjourned. Voice my sentiments exactly. We radio Saturn from my laboratory. Yes, sir. Hey, Bud, can I come along? No, of course you can, old Tammy. Doctor, is it to be war? Yes, we must communicate with Saturn at once. But how can we hope to defeat King with so vast a force at his disposal? With Saturn's help, Wilma, we stand better than an even chance. Is the equipment in order? Yes, sir. It was checked only this morning. This is a catastrophe. The receiving set you left off Saturn is dead. We can't communicate with it. Maybe it's only turned off, sir. The set is dead. If there were any life at all, that lamp would flicker. Instead of burning steadily. We've got to get into communication with them. There's nothing I can do, Marshal. I've made two trips there already, sir. Looks like I'm going to have to make a third. You wouldn't stand a chance. After last night, the outer atmosphere would be swarming with Kane patrol ships. You couldn't make it in one of our ships. But I don't mean to take one of our own ships, sir. We're going to take one of the captured Kane patrol ships. Patrol ship? They're not built for space journeys. I'm sorry, sir. I hadn't thought of that. I can fix that. I can have my technicians install extra rocket racks. You won't have a comfortable journey, but you'll get there. Something to work, sir. I'll be ready to take off as soon as the ship is in order. But, Buck, you don't mean to go alone. I'm afraid so, Wilma. I daren't take a single defender from the city. But you're armed. Ah, the arm's all right. Now, don't you worry about it. See you before I go. So long, buddy. Oh, well, I'll be seeing you, Buck. Boys. Uh, I guess it's about time to take off. Uh, I wish I'd seen Buddy. He's probably very busy at something or other. Yes, sir. Well, I'm sorry you're not making this trip. So am I, Bob. We'll be expecting you back soon. Dr. Ewer, I'll keep in constant communication with you, sir. Good. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.
ZN-1 answering. Go ahead, Commander. How did you manage to escape from Hidden City? What happened to the other ship? I did not broadcast my report, sir. Please advise all patrol ships ZN-1 en route to headquarters with urgent information. Squadron Commander calling all patrol ships. General orders. ZN-1 is an extra detail en route to Leader King's headquarters. <laughs> Okay, buddy. You can come out any time you want now. Say, how did you know I was in there? Well, when you're trying to hide out from somebody, be careful when you peek around corners. Oh, I get it. You saw me in the observation room. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Say, Bucky, you're not really going to Kane's headquarters, are you? Yeah, I'll see you right now. Hey, buddy, you take the controls and keep her as she is. We headed for the planet Saturn. Yes, sir. <laughs> Aldar, you will not save Prince Talon by accepting Kane's terms. Once he's here on Saturn, he will kill your prince and enslave your people. Gentlemen, You're dealing with the vilest type of crime known to man. Kidnapping. Why, we've fought it on Earth for centuries. Men capable of such a crime are without honor. Their words are worthless. And Killer Kane is the foulest of the lot. Why, your own experience with him should tell you that I speak the truth. Surely you must see that a treaty with Killer Kane will result only in your prince's death and the subjugation of your people. May I, who first suggested surrender, Now withdraw my plea. Let us abide by our treaty with the people of the Hidden City and fight Killer Cave. And you? I too cast my vote for war. Open Rogers, send the plane down once, Greg. Air control, air control. All planes assigned to Battle Plan B take off immediately. Captain Rankin, all planes assigned to Battle Plan B are to take off immediately. All planes assigned to Battle Plan B take off immediately. single ship on Kane's private airfield. Dynamo room is over that way. thrown in the robot battalion. We can get him loose. I have an idea he'll help us to get even. You. Call down to the garden and have Crinkle sent up here. Crinkle? That's right. Go on. Hey, Lockhart, send Crinkle up here. Crinkle. Now come in. Move. Thank you. 
Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I'm all right. Now, listen. Listen. We've come here to free the robots and turn them against Kane. Put this back on again. It's harmless now. Then go down and remove the helmets from the others. You got that? That will be a real pleasure. Fine. <laughs> You're through, King. Buddy. Quinko, hold him. No! No! And that, my friends, finishes the story of Killer Kane, the man who wanted to conquer the world. No less ruthless, no less cunning, no less a danger to civilization than the very real enemy that threatens the world today. Let us hope that the scientists of the free world will devise the weapons and the craft that will make democracy invincible against any enemy. God bless America. It suddenly strikes me that Planet Outlaws is like a male fantasy come to life. Just think of it, Buck gets to sleep in for 500 years. With my busy schedule, I'm ecstatic if I can get 20 minutes nap on the weekend. Then when he wakes up, Buck is the smartest, most dynamic guy around. In reality, he'd be treated like something that's escaped from the zoo. Lastly, everyone needs Buck to go on exciting missions, fight the bad guys, test exotic equipment, and crash rocket ships. Out of the half dozen flights that Buck makes, he only lands successfully once. It's easy to see that the bullet cars used in the movie are the same ones from Flash Gordon's trip to Mars in 1938, and even the script is rather suspect. Planet Outlaws is based on an unofficial Flash Gordon story illegally published in 1936, in which Flash travels to Saturn. But this story was not and has never been considered part of the Flash Gordon universe. The final rip-off, the music for Planet Outlaws, is from Bride of Frankenstein in 1935. Is there no shame in Hollywood? 
Ha! Huh, what am I saying? So, as Uranus sinks slowly into the sofa, I mean the West, I bid you good night and farewell until I again grope blindly around the bear trap known as Hollywood for next week's Star Spangled Celluloid Stinker on the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. Toodles! <laughs> <laughs>